Hi, this is Frodo and welcome back to Actualize Notes TV. Today we have another great book on Sparta by Plutarch. On Sparta. Plutarch uh, was a biographer who lived between 50 to 120 AD and he had a wide range of enthusiasms of the subjects, but in particular he liked philosophy. In other words, the study of how to live. And this showed really much through his biographies because he focused a lot on the moral character of the people he portrayed. And in this book he writes about four Spartan lives. He was Lysurgus, who was the lawgiver of Sparta, lawgiver, and three kings. Agesilaw, Agis, and Cleomenes. If uh, you're into Spartan discipline and their way of life, and how you can use that wisdom and apply it to your own life, I think you'll dig the book as much as I did. Now let's jump into the first big idea, which is lives. So uh, the first part of the book, out of the two parts, is lives. And he portrays four, the four lives and their qualities of those people. So let's begin with Lysurgis. Lysurgis was uh, the ancient lawgiver of Sparta, who has been said to live now around 900 BC. And uh, he um, added uh, rules like uh, messes, which is called Andrea. And uh, in these messes, 10 to 15 people would gather and eat together. They were given uh, this uh, strict amounts of food, so they could never overeat, because they had to develop a real strict discipline so as not to lead soft lives. Something we'll talk more about in our fourth big idea. Then we have Agesilo. He was a Spartan king who was known for his simplicity, self-discipline and moderation. And uh, it's, uh, it would have been hard to find one of his thousands of soldiers' beds that would have been inferior, inferior to his bed because uh, he prided himself on living a simple life. Then we have Agis. By the time he was 20, Agis has pretty much um, renounced all self-indulgence, like uh, external focus on riches, fame, in our time is social media likes, followers, etc. And uh, this was a really inspiring example. He <laughs> renounced all self-indulgence by age 20 and stuck with that for the rest of his life. Then we have Cleomenes. Cleomenes he uh, was a public example of self-restraint. He, uh, he could have led this luxurious, extravagant life as a king, but he chose to live like uh, the citizens of Sparta, a more simple way of life. And therefore he gained a lot of respect from other citizens and cities, which helped him a lot in leading Sparta. So, for more information on those lives and their characters, you can check out the book yourself. But uh, for now, think about how you can develop your own discipline through simplicity, moderation, self-restraint, let go of luxurious living, etc. And then we have the second part of the book, which is Spartan saints, a bunch of them from kings, men and women from Sparta. And it was an important part of the upbringing of Spartans to be able to express big ideas in few words. One example is from uh, Agis, the Eurypontid king of Sparta, who has once said, The Spartans do not ask where, how many are the enemy, but where are they? In other words, the Spartans don't ask how many challenges they will face, but how, where they are. Think about how you can apply this to your own life, and check out the book for more sayings like this. Our third big idea is rejection. Something you'll get, something that's a challenge. And uh, imagine you're a Spartan child. You have just been born, and your father is not the one to decide whether you will live or not, whether he will bring you up. He has to bring you to this place called Alecce, where the eldest men of Sparta live. And they will inspect you, look at your limbs, and see whether you are strong enough. And if you are, they'll uh, give your father one of the 9,000 plots of land so he can bring you up as a Spartan soldier. soldier. But if you are too weak, 
then they will leave you at the place of rejection. It's called the place of rejection. In other words, apathite is what they call it, at Mount Tigetus. It makes you think about uh, that uh, we should be uh, grateful that we have ch uh, chances to face rejection and still keep going, right? Because the Spartan children didn't have, if they were seen, they were said to be too weak at their birth. But we can be weak in some areas and still become really strong in those areas if we just do a lot of ton of work over a long period of time. Which brings us to our next big idea, two puppies. So Lysurgis, the lawgiver, uh, wanted to convert his people from a soft life to a more disciplined way of life. And the way he did this was through a demonstration. He would take these two puppies and uh, uh, they were brought from, uh, they were born from the same mother and father. And they would, he would take them and bring one of the puppies up in luxury, let him do whatever he wanted to, eat wherever he wanted to, stay inside, etc. And the other one he'd uh, train to hunt. So when uh, these uh, puppies grew up to become dogs, they, uh, put, the surgeons placed them in an arena and where they, uh, he had laid some bones, delicious bones for the dogs, and placed a wild rabbit. And then when he released the dogs, he would see where, which one they'd follow the bones or the rabbit. And uh, predictably enough, he saw that the one uh, the dog bred up in luxury would go straight after the bones, the pleasures, while the dog who was bred up for hunting went out and killed the rabbit. And he used this to prove the point. And he said, do you see too that education is more important than birth for producing noble behavior? Education is more important than birth for producing noble behavior. Now, 3,000 years later, Carol Dweck, leading researcher on success and achievement, has shown us something called the growth mindset and the fixed mindset. In your book, Mindset. The growth mindset, if you have that, you basically believe that your qualities can be cultivated through effort. Your qualities like character, personality, and skills. But if you have a fixed mindset, you believe that these are set in stone. There's nothing you can do about them. You just uh, have what you got. You have it or you don't. And uh, I found this uh, connection really cool between 3,000 years ago in ancient Sparta and between uh, a woman who had researched success for decades. Think about whether you're in the fixed or birth mindset believing that you can't cultivate your skills, character, and personality, and about how you can get closer to the growth education mindset, that you can cultivate your qualities through your efforts. Our next big idea is moral excellence. The sure just uh, quickly noticed that if he only let the enthusiasts about developing their virtues develop their virtues, then uh, Sparta wouldn't, become, wouldn't last uh, too long, it would be too weak. So therefore he induced, uh, made striving after moral excellence a public duty. And that means that everyone had to live with virtue and start developing their virtues. If they didn't, they were punished. Worse, they got worse punishment than if they harmed another person. Because if they aren't developing themselves, they can't be strong for their families and their state. Think about that. It was a public duty to pursue moral excellence, to live a virtuous life. And uh, by the way, for the Stoics, their four cardinal virtues were self-mastery, wisdom, and uh, they had living in integrity. And the fourth one was courage, which is all surrounded by the virtue of arte, living at your highest potential moment to moment. Are you doing this right now? Well, as Maslow says, Maslow, the humanistic psychologist of the 20th century says, if you deliberately plan on le being less than you're capable of being, then I warn you, you'll be unhappy for the rest of your life. So let's not do that. Let's commit to a life of moral excellence. As we remember that education is more important than birth for producing noble behavior, 
we are not rejected at uh, birth, so we can grow and become as strong as we want to. Saints, there's a lot of Spartan saints expressing a lot of good ideas in few words, and for lives. Read more in the book. So, think about the idea that landed. How can you apply it more consistently to your life starting today? Think about that as we give our greatest gift and greatest service to the world. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day. See ya.